Hello, recruit. I see you're back. I guess you'll be wanting another video then. Well, all right. You have to hit that like button first if you'd be so kind. Pretty you please? Unfortunately, the giveaway winner from the previous video didn't claim their prize in time, so I've drawn a new winner of a copy of X for Timelines, and that winner is Bubble Buddy 47 Nice one, dude. So drop me an email or contact me on Twitter to verify your entry and I will get you sorted out ASAP. Just for clarity, Egosoft have been kind enough to give me a key for X for Timelines, but any opinions expressed are my own. So we're just a few days removed from release and already Expert Timelines is proving quite a divisive DLC to say the least. It's already sitting at mixed reviews on Steam with many people complaining about the difficulty of the missions along with various technical issues and bugs. But are the complaints justified? Even though I've only been able to play a few hours, getting into Graph 2, the DLC unfortunately does have some issues, and I don't think it's just a case of get good like with the Elden Ring DLC recently. So what exactly are the issues then? Well, we'll start with the most obvious and probably most prominent one first, and that's the difficulty of some of the missions. We'll start with the first escort mission in Graph 1. This mission sees you fending off a waves of Xenon fighters in nothing but a glass cannon fighter. And I'm afraid, even as an experienced player, I really struggled with this one and I couldn't get past the second wave. And believe you me, I really did try with this one. I gave it several attempts, and by several I mean about a dozen or so, at least. Either I couldn't catch up to the transporters in time because they'd gotten so far away, or they got destroyed while I was still trying to deal with their fighters. This one was really frustrating to say the least. And uh, just imagine how a new player must have felt playing this one. So in the end, I decided it wasn't worth my effort and moved on to the next mission. Not really what I call fun. Yeah, sadly, it doesn't get much better because there's plenty of other missions like this too. Like the first Terminus mission, for example. In this one, you give them a slightly better, but it's still pretty useless glass cannon fighter. And you have to take out various subsystems of several enemy ships, like the engines and things like that, all whilst having to deal with the endless waves of fighters, just like with the first mission. But at least in this one you do get to respawn, but that said, if you lose sight of the engine ships, they're really hard to find again in the sea of red. Many of the complaints I've seen in the Steam Hub too suggest this sadly doesn't improve much in later missions either. So why exactly is it so divisive then? Well, I think the main problem players have, besides the disproportionate difficulty of course, is that it deviates from the usual recipe DLCs from Microsoft seem to follow, and that is adding content to the sandbox universe in whatever flavour that may be. And I don't think that's entirely fair, because Microsoft were pretty clear with what the DLC was going to be right from the start after all, and I think too many people maybe just bought the DLC blindly without doing their homework first. Not that I'm trying to invalidate their opinions, of course. Everyone is entitled to not liking something, after all. But I think it does play a bit of a role here. Also, Egosoft have frequently shown that they're not afraid to try something different. Export Timelines and X Rebirth are proof of that, after all. And on the face of it, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's a good thing. A great thing, in fact. It helps to keep things fresh. It helps to innovate. And in this case, it helps to reaffirm what the developers are good at and of course what their player race likes. But Egosoft definitely deserves some credit for being willing to try something so different. And after all, you don't get innovative new concepts without risking it for a biscuit every so often. But who's Mitsuko? Don't let me hear you talking about Mitsuko again. If MD catches you saying that name, he'll, he'll make you like the video and subscribe to my channel. He will, I'm telling you, he'll do it. So, the million dollar question. Is Export Timelines a failure? Well, I think calling Export Timelines a failure at this early stage is maybe a little bit harsh. I think at the very least it's certainly not what people were expecting, but were mistakes made? Unfortunately, yes. I think that's fair to say at this point. Unfortunately, I think the main mistake was who the DLC was targeted at, and I'm afraid I'm guilty of making the same mistake too. The benefit of hindsight, huh? Anyway, it's most certainly not a new player friendly DLC by any stretch of the imagination. I think new players are going to have a very difficult and frustrating time with many of the missions. It kind of just throws you in at the deep end and leaves you to figure things out for yourself. The missions, at least as they currently stand, were clearly designed for someone who's familiar and competent with the various flight and combat mechanics that Xbox has to offer. So I think if Egosoft want to continue to push the DLC to new players, 
and timelines would greatly benefit from a few optional starter missions. Starter missions that teach you some of the basic commands and get used in combat, which is certainly what you'll be doing a lot of. Then I think perhaps they can nerf some of their mission difficulty, at least in their first graph, so players don't just end up uninstalling out of pure frustration. Overall though, I think this story is certainly intriguing, and there's still some enjoyment to be had. So, I definitely think timelines are needed another couple of months in the oven. It does feel a little rushed in some places, unfortunately. So what about the future? Well, the good news is that EgoSoft are aware of and are working on some of the problems that players have had with emissions, and of course some of the technical issues players have been experiencing. Admittedly, I've had a few odd bugs popping up myself, so I'm sure over the coming weeks and months, timelines will see some good progress. If past releases are anything to go by, EgoSoft products definitely age better over time, like a fine wine. EgoSoft have also confirmed in the community post that X4 Timelines isn't the direction they want to take the game, and that they'll be going back to the regular model of DLCs going forward. Which is great to hear if you're not a fan of X4 Timelines, which is honestly understandable, it's not really everyone's cup of tea. So would I recommend X4 Timelines? If you're new and thinking about picking this one up, I would maybe wait a couple of weeks to see what changes and improvements they make. You're not really missing out on anything by waiting a couple of weeks. Perhaps even wait for a sale. The EgoSoft sales are generally pretty good. Instead, I might get Kingdom End. It's easily one of X4's best DLCs. Nonetheless, 7.0 is still a pretty big update for you to get your teeth stuck into meanwhile. If, however, you're pretty comfortable with combat in X4 and can handle yourself in CQC, you'll probably have a blast. I'm sorry, I had to. It's the law. Anyway, like I said earlier, the story is still pretty intriguing and the voice acting is definitely a step up, and the preset scenarios definitely shape things up if you need a break from galactic domination. At the end of the day, fun is relative, isn't it? I think some people are going to love it, and some people are going to hate it. It's just that sort of DLC, I think. But really though, who's my super? Hey, sorry, Tony, he could be the new TNT champion yeah, right now! Yeah, right now! Oh, oh, oh.